time, date 11-28-78, tape number F-100, air to be arranged, producer-director Bruce Boto. show. Today we have Robin Chorick, who's written a book and is presently working on a screenplay. I'll be asking him about this and about how he plans to get the play produced. He'll be joining me right after this short message, so stick around. It should be very interesting. Robin Chorick. Robin, I'd like to thank you for coming today. Hi. Could you tell us something about your book? Okay, it's called Foghead, and um, basically it deals with a relationship between a set of twins, uh, a set of male twins, and it, it's uh, um, a study of their relationship from the time they were children to their teen years to uh, their adulthood and to their eventual Strangely, and break up. And it's also about a lot of other things, too. There's a lot of subplots. Uh, it's a study of child abuse, of uh, the agony and the ecstasy involved with pulling something from yourself and trying to create an artistic piece of it. Because the, the main character um, in the book, uh, Bobby Hawkner, is writing a film about himself, about his relationship with his brother. And as he begins to explore the themes uh, interwoven throughout the play, he begins to see things in his life that he had ignored uh, heretofore. What motivated you to write the book? A lot of things. Uh, I, Well, first of all, I'm a twin, so it's autobiographical from that mm -hmm. sense. And uh, also because I feel very strongly about uh, child abuse and about the raising of twins. And, and this is a study of how the, 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 parents, uh, the parents involved were not equipped to have children, much less twins. And, and raising twins requires a tremendous amount of understanding of the human condition and uh, a delicacy that requires a lot of thought. This is your first novel? Uh, yeah, the first one that I've ever taken seriously. I've kept diaries and, and things like that, which are a form of novel writing. And I've started novels, but never things that I've really finished or, or taken seriously to the extent of wanting to finish them. Foghead is sort of an unusual title. Can you tell us what it refers to? Or would that be, re it's not re revealing too much of the No, story. not at all. Uh, well, the, the main character in the book, Bobby Hawkner, is called Foghead by his father because he's mainly a, a, a very artistic, very uh, a dream-like person. He's always imagining things the way he would like them to be rather than the way they are. And also, it's a metaphor uh, for, uh, on, a, on a bigger level, for the character who goes through kind of a fog throughout the entire play. So at the very end, uh, when the, the play, the, the film that he's writing, he att attempts to destroy it because he feels guilty about the people that he's written about. And then as he looks at each person he's written about, he begins to see them as they are, not how he would like them to be, or how he remembers them as a child. Because a lot of times when we think back to incidents in our childhood, mm -hmm. we tend to uh, see them in, in a haze and in a nostalgic uh, way rather than the way they really were. You know. 
You're writing the screenplay at the same time as the novel? Or? Yeah, well, I, I actually started out as a screenplay first, and then uh, I couldn't, I kind of got lost uh, with it in the middle, and I said, someone suggested, why don't you do what Eric Siegel did with Love Story? He wrote a screenplay first, and then he wrote a novel, and I thought, that's a good idea, because if I write it as a novel, I'll get a better grip on the inner thoughts of the characters, and have, I'll, I'll understand, I think, uh, I think I'll understand on a stronger level the, the main storyline and, 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 and describing the actions of the characters. What do you hope will be the impact created from the book? I, I don't really know. It's hard to say. The impact on me in creating it has been great, uh, really tremendous. But I don't know. I mean, when you create something out of yourself, uh, how other people will respond to it is very nebulous. I, I, I hope the impact will be a strong one in that people will think about uh, the next time they go to hit a child or the next time they go to say something derogatory to that child, that they will say, oh yeah, I remember that incident in the book or I remember that incident in the film about when this occurred, am I doing that? And I hope the impact will be that people will qu question their lives a little more. I don't know, but it's, it's hard to say. You've talked about twinship as requiring a special understanding. Yeah. Could you go into that a little bit more? Well, uh, yeah. First of all, you have two people in the case of an I identical twins, like Bobby and Bucky Hawkner, the two characters in the book, are identical twins. They look alike. They sound alike. They use a lot of the same expressions. And twins come together always. They always are presented as a package deal. And it's, it's almost unavoidable when you put them in a social situation that people are going to compare. They're going to say, well, your hair is longer, uh, your tooth is chipped, his isn't, uh, uh, you have slightly crossed eyes, he doesn't. It's, something, it's, it's inevitable. So with that, uh, right at the forefront, I think uh, one of the real delicacies in handling that is uh, uh, that parents can do in dealing with that is not to compare, not make them make the, uh, the twins uh, aware of that. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing. It's a special thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of that you look alike. And, but that's where it stops. I mean, don't encourage dressing them alike. Don't put them in the same classes. Always stress individuality, that you are a separate entity unto yourself, and there's no one like you that, uh, and, and just because there's someone that looks like you does not mean that you have to come together as a collective of two, you know. It sounds like it's sort of a case of having to share an identity, having half an identity right, for yourself. Right, that's it exactly, sharing an identity. And it's hard enough, heaven knows, to, as a singular person, just to, you know, feel good about yourself and think that you're special. Because all of us like to think that we're, you know, that we're the, on the one and only, you know, that we're going to take the world by storm and all that. And when you have someone that you're, you're uh, uh, dealing with very closely, that w when you walk into a room and, and people say, you know, they go like from one to the other, and when you start talking, they laugh and they say, uh, it's weird. It's like you, you feel like you're a, a, an alter ego with two, or, uh, one person with two alter egos or something, you know. In addition to that being possibly traumatic, can it also be fun sometimes to do? Oh yeah, yeah, and it's it's uh, there's a lot of attention paid to twins, which uh, uh, I point out in the middle part of the book where Bobby writes how he loves the attention of walking into a room and people say, "Wow, there's the Hawkner twins," you know, and they start asking you questions and uh, uh, you know they, they they notice you, and and this causes a, a tremendous difficulty later on in Bobby's personality because he feels when he does go singular, that he, he thinks uh, uh, people won't find me individual. I have to have this other half to complete me, wh which is ironic. This can happen, I guess, in any relationship when you think about a lot of male-female relationships when you break up. Uh, one person will say, oh, I, I can't go singular. I have to have that other person to complete me. Well, that's even on, on, a, on a, a more intense level when you're with someone that looks and sounds like you, you know. Uh, that wanting to share that identity is, is, is a stronger, more intense thing. This is sort of an obvious question since you seem to know a lot about the subject. Are you a twin? I am a twin, yeah. I am an identical twin. 
Does this work somewhat autobiographical? Yeah, uh, it is autobiographical. I think all works of art, to a great extent, are autobiographical. You use portions of your own life, and there will be, you know, great portions of my own life in this. But also, you tend to heighten things. Mm -hmm. uh, it, sometimes. Uh, uh, daily life as is is pretty boring. So if you presented it as it was, it would be boring. So you kind of heighten it. You add a dramatization. A dramatization, right? What, let's talk about the characters. Let's talk about Bobby first. Mm -hmm. What is he like? Well, um, he's uh, a very uh, sensitive and almost unearthly in that he uh, he can't really cope with a lot of things. This is why early on when he was abused. He um, drew into this dream life, which is vis-a-vis -vis the title Fall Kid, uh, in which he goes into this other world that he uh, uh, peoples his world with people as he would like them to be. He, he is so sensitive, he can't stand to see what's happening. So every time uh, the abusement comes forth from his parents, he just immediately snaps into this other world, which is very schizophrenic. So after he, uh, he goes into his adult, like he can't make the switch, and 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 so um, he turns to a lot of things. He, he's an actor for a long while. He works with his brother in an actor-director relationship, and then he goes to writing, which uh, writing the play. What and all period that. of their lives does this cover? It covers uh, right from the beginning when they were children, right from the crib on. In fact, the book opens with. Uh, uh, a baby, a baby coming forth, and another baby coming forth out of the uterus, and and the feelings that a baby might feel if they could uh, be propelled into the future, and the descriptions of, of the feeling of coming out of the womb. So it starts way, way, way back, and goes in the teens to their adult, you know, to their middle thirties. You think Bobby resents being a twin? Yes, somewhat, and also enjoys it from things I've mentioned, the, the attention, uh, uh, the having the embarrassment of riches to write about for the play, but also at the same time, he doesn't, he resents the sharing an identity with someone, he changes his name in, in the book several times, uh, changes his hair, uh, uh, all kinds of drastic attempts to get away mm -hmm. from this appendage that hangs on you, you know. How about yourself? Do you regret being a twin? Um, yes and no. I, I, sometimes I do, for the very same things that Bobby resents, the sharing the identity, and also enjoying the attention of it. What do you think the most important thing a par parent can do for uh, twins? Bar none is make the child feel good about himself, herself. Uh, not to compare him to anything else, to accept him as a single entity that that not to, to think of him as uh, he, he or she represents you. That child is a singular individual onto themselves, and they don't come into this world to, to live up to your expectations, uh, that, or, or you don't have to live up to theirs, but that, that child is a separate person, and make them feel good about themselves. I see a lot of parents, I observe a lot of behavior where um, parents uh, psychically damage children. By what are some ways? That. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go what ahead. are some ways do you think that a parent can make a child feel not good? Well, just the things that I mentioned, comparing them, saying uh, I don't approve of your lifestyle. Uh, uh, what would your father think of you? Uh, oh, you're a sh you're a disgrace to the family. All these uh, 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 little things that that parents do because they think the child represents them and they're supposed to do this because they they represent the parent. How much of an effect do you think that has on your life as an adult? How much uh, How much of an effect do you think it has on your, your life later on? Oh, it has a great effect. I think that, that the patterns that are developed very early in childhood stay with you for the rest of your life, I think, in one way or another. When will the book be done? I'd like to read it. About six months. I think in about six months. And how soon can we see the movie? Uh, that will be a little longer. That's going to take a little while. It's a lot of work to do on that. Robin, I'd like to thank you for coming. We're just about out of time, sharing your experiences with us. Thank you. That's all for today. Tomorrow, Ray Bradbury will be joining me, so tune in tomorrow at 10. Have a good day.